Mr. President, as chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, one of my highest priorities has been the confirmation of judges to fill vacancies on the federal bench. Since the beginning of the Biden administration, the Senate has confirmed over 191 highly qualified, independent, and even-handed jurists to the federal bench. It's my belief that there'll be a total of 193 in just a matter of days. They represent the best of our legal system. Demographically and professionally diverse judges who respect the rule of law, adhere to president, and above all, answer only to the Constitution. We should add another nominee to that list, Adil Mungi, who's been nominated to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. What an amazing resume. Mr. Mungi is eminently qualified. He graduated from Oxford and Harvard Law School. He spent more than 20 years in private practice at one of the top law firms in the United States. He focused his practice on commercial litigation. Mr. Mungi has served as counsel of record in more than 30 matters before federal appellate courts, as well as eight amicus briefs submitted to the U.S. Supreme Court. He has gone above and beyond that practice in his pro, pro, bono, pro bono dedication, devoting more than 4,000 hours to representing clients in religious discrimination, asylum, and employment discrimination cases. Based on his record, you would think Mr. Mungi would be quickly confirmed, but I've left off one fact on his resume. He is a Muslim American. The treatment of this nominee before the Senate Judiciary Committee has reached a new low in many ways, but also with historic echoes. More than 50 years ago, President Lyndon Johnson nominated Thurgood Marshall, who would become the first black American to serve on the Supreme Court. At his confirmation hearing, Justice Marshall faced racist questions and McCarthy-like accusations that he was a communist. If that sounds familiar, it's because Mr. Mungi, the first Muslim American nominated to the federal appellate court, faced similar treatment at his hearing before our committee. Committee Republicans subjected him to irrelevant, combative lines of questioning about Israel-Hamas war. They even asked whether he celebrated the 9-11 terrorist ta attacks in his home. Think about that for a second. An American coming before the Senate Judiciary Committee of the Muslim faith is being asked if he celebrated the 9-11 anniversary in his home each year. During the hearing, under oath, Mr. Mangi unequivocally condemned anti-Semitism in all its forms and condemned any acts of terrorism no fewer than 10 times 10 times at one hearing. He also repeatedly denounced any form of hate or bigotry. Any insinuation that Mr. Mungi is anti-Semitic or a terrorist sympathizer is rooted in anti-Muslim bigotry that has no place in our country or in Congress. And the claims are simply false. He has represented a broad coalition of Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, and other religious groups. As Mr. Mangi said, and I quote, it is distinctly American for people of so many different faiths to come together in unity in this manner. What has been un-American is the treatment Mr. Mangi faced since hearing his hearing. Republicans are trying to blame Mr. Mangi for statements by other people and events he didn't even attend and wasn't even aware of. That is guilt by association. It is wrong. It is unfair. Republicans have unfairly attacked Mr. Mangi for his nominal affiliation with the Alliance of Families for Justice. They falsely, falsely claim that he supports, quote, cop killers, that he supports cop killers. That outrageous allegation could not be farther from the truth. In Mr. Mangi's own words, he is, quote, not represented or otherwise provided legal services to any individual convicted of killing a law enforcement officer, end of quote. In addition, he's clearly stated, and I quote him directly, I condemn any violence against law enforcement officers without equivocation, end of quote. As Mr. Mangi noted, it is shocking and false to suggest that he has sympathy for attacks on law enforcement. On the other hand, during the Trump administration, Republicans voted unanimously to confirm two judges who had personally represented individuals who had killed police officers. 
Those individuals who are entitled to the right to counsel. I'm not arguing that point, but it just shows you how far they go, have gone in establishing a new standard, a totally unfair standard. The treatment of Mr. Mangi by Republicans puts their hypocrisy on full display. There cannot be one standard for Republican appointees and another for Democrats. Based on Mr. Mangi's actual record, more than 125 civil rights and human rights organizations support him. Organizations representing more than one million Jewish Americans, including the National Council of Jewish Women and the Anti-Defamation League. And I want to say at this point, after the terrible hearing that he was subjected to in the committee in December, the Anti-Defamation League volunteered a statement to our committee, which I read into the record, in defense of Mr. Mangi and in criticism of the harsh, unfair criticism of those at his hearing who blamed him for being anti-Semitic. Nothing could be further from the truth. They, these other organizations and ADL have openly supported his nomination and condemned the treatment he faced at his hearing. In addition, Mr. Mangi has received the support of a number of law enforcement organizations, including the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives and a bipartisan group of former New Jersey State Attorneys General and U.S. Attorneys. Any judicial nominee should expect a close examination of his legal career before the committee. Since first being nominated, Mr. Mangi has been prepared for just that. However, he should not have to answer for baseless and bigoted attacks that do not accurately reflect him or his record in many different ways. In a letter of support, retired Third Circuit Judge Timothy Lewis contrasted Mr. Mangi's experience as a nominee to his own experience as one of only two black judges nominated to the federal appellate court by President George H.W. Bush. Judge Lewis noted that he was treated with respect by Republican senators as well as Democratic senators who held the majority. Judge Lewis urged the Senate to treat Mr. Mangi with the same level of respect that he received. He wrote, and I quote, if people from underrepresented communities believe they will be unfairly attacked, stereotyped, and rejected by the Senate, they're likely to think twice about being nominated, thus hindering efforts to make our courts look more like America very difficult. Judge Lewis is right. I urge my colleagues to dismiss the smear campaign against Mr. Mangi and to support his nomination. I yield the floor.